Vincent Price was an actor best known for his roles in horror films. Later in his life, he also hosted BBC Radio's horror and mystery series, The Price of Fear. Price had many talents beyond his life as a performer. He studied art history and established an art museum with his wife. He was also a gifted chef who published multiple cookbooks and had a cooking show. Vincent Leonard Price was born on May the 27th, 1911 in St. Louis, Missouri. His villains were debonair yet menacing, played with a silken voice and a self-mocking air that oozed treachery. Price's father owned the National Candy Company and his paternal grandfather developed and sold a cream of tartar based baking powder. Vincent graduated from Yale University in 1933 and spent a year as a school teacher before, as he put it, I had an extraordinary experience of finding out that I knew nothing. He enrolled at the University of London in 1934 to pursue a master's degree in fine arts, but his burgeoning interest in the theatre soon led him to pursue an acting career. He first appeared on stage in a London production of the play Chicago and next portrayed the leading role of Prince Albert in Victoria Regina, both in 1935. The latter production was particularly successful and transferred to Broadway later that year as a vehicle for actress Helen Hayes. I came along with the sets, Price later joked, and he stayed with the production for three years. While in New York, Price joined Orson Welles' prestigious Mercury Theatre Ensemble of radio actors and performed leading roles in several Mercury productions. In 1938, he travelled to Hollywood and made his screen debut in Service Deluxe, and he eventually landed lead and character roles in such popular films as The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex in 1939, the House of the Seven Gables in 1940, The Song of Bernadette in 1943, Otto Preminger's Lara in 1944, Leave Her to Heaven in 1945, and The Three Musketeers in 1948. He portrayed romantic leads and classical characters during this period, but was at his best when playing evil men for dramatic or comedic effect as in his first horror film, The Invisible Man Returns in 1940, and the low-budget Shock in 1946. By the 1950s, Price had accumulated an impressively diverse resume, but had yet to establish himself as a major star. His big break came with House of Wax in 1953, one of the first films shot in 3D, in which he played a murderous but seemingly kindly sculptor who uses human victims to populate his airily lifelike wax museum. With this film, he established himself as America's master of horror, and he was instrumental in re-establishing the genre's popularity, performing in such films as The Fly in 1958, House on Haunted Hill in 1958, Return of the Fly in 1959, and The Tingler in 1959. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Price, however, did not limit himself to horror films and he demonstrated his range with memorable performances in such fare as the Bob Hope comedy Casanova's Big Night in 1954, Fritz Lang's newspaper drama While the City Sleeps in 1956, and Cecil B. DeMille's biblical epic, The Ten Commandments, in 1956. In the 1960s, Price appeared in his most acclaimed series of films, adaptions of Edgar Allan Poe short stories as directed by B-film king Roger Corman. Often appearing with such veterans of the macabre as Boris Karloff, Basil Rathbone and Peter Lorre, Price delivered memorably menacing performances in the films House of Usher in 1960, The Pit and the Pendulum in 1961, Tales of Terror in 1962, The Raven in 1963, The Haunted Palace in 1963, The Mask of the Red Death in 1964, and The Tomb of Lygia in 1964. It was during this period that Price attained cult figure status, 
especially among the younger generation, and he gleefully parodied his own gothic image in such farces as Beach Party in 1963, The Comedy of Terrors in 1963, and Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine in 1965. He eschewed the campy histrionics for such films as Witchfinder General in 1968, released in the US as The Conqueror Worm, in which he delivered one of his most effectively sinister performances. Price's popularity continued into the 1970s, and such movies as The Abominable Dr. Fibes in 1971 and Theatre of Blood in 1973 remained fan favourites. Shortly thereafter, Price cut back substantially on his acting to devote himself to his other passions in life, fine art and gourmet cooking. In 1951, he established the Vincent Price Gallery and Art Foundation on the campus of East Los Angeles Community College, to which he donated much of his prestigious private collection. He donated generously to museums and art foundations throughout his life, and in 1972, he wrote the best-selling coffee table book, A Treasury of American Art. With his second wife, Mary, he co-authored several cookbooks and co-hosted several television cooking shows throughout the 1960s and early 1970s. There, a treasury of great recipes in 1965 was well regarded. During the 70s and 80s, Price restricted himself mainly to voiceovers and TV guest appearances. His final role of note was as the inventor in Edward Scissorhands in 1990, a role written specifically for him. The embodiment of gleeful, suave screen villainy, Vincent Price died in Los Angeles in October 1993 at the age of 82. People magazine eulogised him as the Gable of Gothic. Much earlier, an English critic named Gilbert Adair spoke for many fans when he said, Every man has his price, and mine is Vincent. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favourite Vincent Price movie that you like the most, or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.